Hi, I'm Lydia Legler. I'm a Marquette University Sports Performance Intern in the fall of 2016. And this is my presentation on my annual plan for Gaelic football. So first, does anybody know what Gaelic football is? No? <laughs> Easier question. Does anybody know where it would be predominantly played? Taylor? Ireland? Yeah, so it's mostly played in Ireland with occasional leagues in Australia, England, and some even in America. So to start, I have just a clip some of how, what Gaelic football looks like, how they play, stuff like that. So some general info is the games are about 60 minutes long with 5 to 10 minute half time. And 15 people are playing on a team at a time. So the positions there are similar to what would be like on a soccer team. So there's a goalie, about 6 defenders, uh, 2 midfielders, and then 6 forwards as well. And then they play on a field that's 130 to 145 meters long and then 80 to 90 meters wide, which is also a little larger than your normal soccer field is. Here is what the ball looks like. It's just a leather ball, similar to what a volleyball would be, a little bigger though. And so there's the field, and here they would have what would look like the American football goal post, but with a soccer goal and below it. And there's a picture of that on the next slide that I'll show you. So here's the goal, the net, and the goal post. So how to score is the players will move the ball up and down the field. They can either carry it, bounce it, kick it, pass it to other teammates, or there's a thing called soloing, which there was a couple times in the video you saw where they drop the ball and then they kick it back up to themselves and then they continue moving on. So you can either punch or kick the ball to score. And if it goes in between the goal here, past the goal, you'll get three points. In between the upright posts would only be one point. So some common injuries with Gaelic football is they're mostly lower limb injuries because it's a predominantly lower limb sport. So there can be ACL tears because of the rapid changes of movements that they're going through. Um, hamstring tears are strange because there's a lot of kicking involved, higher velocities, it puts a lot of stress on it. And then a lot of over injury, overuse injuries such as shin splints, other muscular strains as well. Um, various injuries are also caused from contacts that include concussions, bruises, things like that. And although it's not a typical injury, burnout is also an issue with a lot of their athletes because it's considered an amateur sport. Nobody actually gets paid for it. So you have to consider that these athletes are also going through all of their practices and training while also dealing with their families, possible other full-time jobs or schooling as well. So that was another thing that I had to consider while programming for them. So movement analysis. It's an intermittent high intensity sport means they're going for short bursts of high speeds while also although they're continuously moving throughout the entire game. So the players average about five seconds of high intensity movements throughout the game, although that varies throughout their positions. Common movements are they're accelerating, decelerating, rapid changes of motions like we talked about, and there is some jumping as well involved. Um, and the average distance is about 8,500 meters, although that's also variable depending on positions. Uh, players like midfielders are going to move a lot more than what like a goalie or defender would move. Um, it involves both the upper limbs and lower limbs, so things like catching, throwing, passing, and the punting and kicking are also involved. And it's also a semi-relative contact sport. Uh, they allow shoulder and shoulder contact, and you can also hit the ball out of an opponent's hands, although that can also end up
ends up being more contact than what is anticipated. So National Football League is one of the major tournaments for Gaelic football, which I chose to make my program around. Um, it's organized by the Gaelic Athletic Association, and there's four divisions, and so there's eight teams per division. Each county is, like, makes up one team. So does anybody know, unless any of the counties, that would have a team? Kilkenny. Uh, not in the Division One for last year. I think it is one of them. So Division One last year was made up of Cary, Dublin, Mayo, Noggin, Cork, Down, Donegal, and Roscommon. So anybody guess who won last year the championship game? Yes. <laughs> awesome. So that is who I chose to base my program around that was Dublin. And then another unique thing with it is the divisions are constantly changing. So for example, the two teams that competed in the final game in the Division II bracket, they will end up getting moved to Division I this year. And then the two bottom teams from Division I will get moved down to the Division II, and it continues on throughout all the divisions, um, which keeps it more of an even playing game for everyone, keeps things more interesting. So how the tournament works is each team will play each other once throughout the entire season, so you're guaranteed seven games throughout the entire tournament. Um, and then finalists who go into the semifinals is based on just your records. And then it goes into pool play where they'll play each other to determine who then makes it to the finals. So here is what my annual plan looks like. Um, I consider it in green important holidays because they are amateur sports. Um, there's going to be time that they will meet off for holidays and stuff like that. Um, and then the red is the important games, semifinals and finals at the end of course. And then I highlighted the game Carry. Since Carry has been consistently a good team, they are have won the most championships out of anybody so far in history. So that would be an important game to win. It kind of shows how you're going to do it throughout the rest of the season. So I have them peaking there right before they start the season, and then at the end, right before they get to the finals as well. In blue, I have one I'm going to do testing. So I'm going to do endurance testing with the beat test because it's still an endurance sport, they're still playing 60 minutes. Um, and then I have strength testing, squat clean, and bench one rep max to determine how, what intensity and how much they're going to be doing throughout their program. I have the speed testing using the 5105 or the pro agility test, uh, since it is also a speed sport and based a lot on agility, so I'll determine that. Will help that. And then I also decided to do a vertical jump test before every practice to use as a type of performance indicator. Uh, so how they're performing and responding to different training or if they're overtraining, things like that. So then I get into the off season, which is between September and November. It's about 10 weeks long. So here I have them training four days per week. And I've broken it up into four building weeks and then one deload week to incorporate that rest, not to make sure they're not overtraining themselves or becoming burnt out. Um, main focus here is just general strength, starting out at lower intensity and higher volume, and then slowly working up into a higher intensity as you get to the end towards preseason. And then to the preseason is about November, January, it's about eight weeks. Here I have it lowered to two to three days per week, depending on, because there was this all of the holiday seasons during this time, so it influenced that. But then also, uh, just making sure they're not overtraining as well then, getting towards when they're getting to the end season. So I broke it up to three, three building weeks and then the one deload week. And here I'm working on more, being able to handle forces, since there is a contact sport, make, make sure they have dynamic stability for that to be able to overcome that and not get injured. On the end season is from end of January to beginning of April, so it's about 13 weeks if you make it all the way to the finals. So they're training two to three days per week. Um, three weeks, three days per week would be when they don't have competitions, so they don't compete every week. There's some weeks where they would compete and then they wouldn't compete again for another three weeks. So I want to make sure they're not losing any of the strength we had built during that time frame and continue working. Uh, so I've opened up to four microcycles. With three building weeks and then one deload week. And here I'm influ uh, focusing on things such as speed and power um, because it's important to still maintain that, but also maintaining general strength throughout as well to help prevent injuries during the season. So here's my contact information.
question? Do you have any questions? Or do you have any questions now? Daylight. So you mentioned that they don't get paid. So how exactly do they get involved in this? Like tryouts? Like you know? Yeah. Uh, it's something that they start like when they're really little. So like here with our kids, soccer or football kind of thing. It's just part of their culture there that it's just a fun sports play. So they'll start working like their way from little on till they're up to like major leagues, I guess. And they still love it so they want to compete at, I guess, but they would consider their professional level. The in season is it every day do they practice? If I do not know I'd have to look it up. Are players typically um, able to kick with both feet or uh, are they typically like a right-footed player versus a left-footed player? And then with that, do you tend to see overuse injuries on one side of the body versus the other? From what I saw, they can use both feet depending on like what side of the play on, but like most people there's more one side that's more dominant than the others that they're better at. Um, but it doesn't seem to affect side like bilaterally sides for overuse injuries. What, what is the purpose of soloing? Like that, that just seems like a difficult thing to do to be running and kick it back up to you. Like why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you just hold it? But from what I understood, it's just another way to get around defenders. Another movement to throw them off so you can get past them. Any other questions? No? Good.